Sergio Picanha. Um, he is joining us today from Rio, um, which I did not do the calculation of whether Rio or we had a speaker earlier from Athens. Um, so <laughs> I don't know uh, which is further, but at least you're not in a completely, completely different time zone. Um, so welcome. Sergio is a visual journalist at the Washington Post. Um, he works uh, in the opinion section and is the mastermind behind the Absurd America column. And he previously worked at the New York Times. And I just want to say something that I, I'm actually, I did not go to Rio because of COVID. So I saw you mentioned in the chat. Sorry yes, about I, that. I was planning, I was planning actually, but I had to, we had to cancel the, the trip. So here I am uh, at home. But um, I wanted to, I, I put a doc in the chat and you guys can see the links that I that I have put over there. Uh, these are exactly what I'm going to be talking about. So um, it's in, actually seg segues a little into what Alicia was talking because uh, he was talking about what goes behind any of these th things. And I'm going to show some examples of how those things can come along. Uh, I wanted to emphasize in this little talk the importance of using graphics with the stories and to tell the stories as an element to tell the stories. Oftentimes people either they get overexcited about the possibilities of data visualization or data journalism, and they do things that have too much, too many bells and whistles, but not enough storytelling. And other times, they think, oh, maybe we can do a chart, but that chart is completely useless to tell. I mean, if you take it out, nobody will notice, like it's an, like an appendix. So I'm trying to show you what can you gain here if you uh, invest a little bit of time in merging these two things and how that can change the way you tell a story. So in this uh, example here, you see that uh, I, I put this example here because it shows uh, uh, how uh, black and white people live in two different countries here. So I could have just had a, a number of charts that show those things. But what I find interesting here is that we write and the writing takes you into the, to, to the, to the chart. So it's like the chart is helping to clarify the point that you're making or it's emphasizing the point that you're making or proving what you're showing. So in the, uh, like I work in the opinions desk. So uh, what we do uh, is uh, we try to make arguments uh, sometimes based on, in my case, sometimes based on numbers and based on, on visuals always. So uh, in this case here, for example, just showing that infant mortality rates in the US for white people, and uh, they are very much like in Canada, but for African-Americans, they are very much like uh, in Mexico. So, and, and if you just keep flowing through, uh, you see that uh, the text, uh, for example, black women are more likely to receive late or no prenatal natal care. And they fa also face nearly three times the risk of pregnancy related death. So, and now the chart goes and proves the point that I had just made. So if you remove this chart, or that uh, any or any of the charts that you see here, okay, it still makes sense, but you would not. I'm, I'm using the visual. The visual is fundamental for you to be able to complete the thought and to prove the thought that you're making. This is one thing on this example. Now the other thing. Let me see what I can do here. So now I'm going to go to another example, just uh, that has nothing to do with data. And I'm using a different visual kind of visual element. Here I'm using photograph. And this is a, a story, a little story that I published when uh, Trump went, with, that did that Bible photo stunt a couple of years ago. And so I start with him saying, I'm going for a walk, look at me. And then uh, I used, what I did, I used photos uh, from the wires, but I used the photos, uh, the same photos, but I changed the, the words. And what I'm trying to uh, make this point here is that we can change how people perceive the photos or the images. They could be graphics or they could be drawings, they could be anything, but uh, by, by sewing it with the word. So in this case here, let's just go real quick. I'm going for a walk, look at me. 
but there are some bad people out there, very bad and very evil people. They don't want to look at me. So, the, so I'll tell the police to clear the way for me. Tear gas, don't look at me. Get out of the way so people, so other people can look at me. Who are you looking at? Me? I like walking a few steps ahead of everyone so you can get a good look at me. And then we can keep going. Never mind the writing on the wall, just look at me. So in the in the way the story goes, like uh, as you see, the writing keeps telling taking you to the mindset. It's like we're right, I'm writing in this case as if I'm Trump, and all that he cares about is that people look at him. So look at me in front of this church building. Which church is this? Who cares? I'm not here for the church. I'm here for me. And then what's it in this book? Now I'm holding a Bible. Look at me. Should I say you're fired? Oops, wrong show. I'm president now. Look at me. Okay, stunt done. Heading home. Last chance now. Look at me. So in this case here, the only reason I put this example here is so that you know that we can build a story that would not work without the text or without the photos. They only work together. And the same in here, I'm, I'm using a different visual element. So I'm talking now as, uh, as charts uh, or photos or illustrations in this case, as visual elements without which you, uh, but that you can use together to tell a story. That's the main point that I'm trying to make here. So in this case, here is when Trump started to make uh, lies about uh, uh, about having won the election. So uh, he, I just say that he starts lying, and it's the Teotihuacan Procure, and uh, his nose starts growing so much across the nation, across the ocean, and foreign lands, out of the atmosphere. It orbited the globe, past the planets beyond the galaxy and it kept traveling until it reached the end of the universe where it got stuck, stuck forever in a parallel a reality, one in which Trump had won the election. So now that I showed you an example with a chart, with uh, illustration, with photos, I want to come back to how we can do data visualization. So here and tell a story in this other piece here that I'm showing you, I, I generally tend to use in my columns a mix of illustrations and sometimes numbers. And uh, in this case here, I'm just speculating. I, I came across, uh, I, I realized that people in some states, in, mo in, in most states that, uh, that have cows in the US, uh, uh, they have sometimes more cows than people. And then I start to make the math and I realized that it makes more sense, for example, uh, that to in, in Iowa, Kansas, Montana, Nebraska, they have 17 million people, but they have 18 senators. So, and in California, they had for almost 40 million and they only had two. So I start to make the math and to make the point and also a little bit of a joke on whether, you know, they, the senators were there in fact to represent the cows and not the people. Then I do uh, some maps just showing uh, the proportion, uh, the I scale the maps in relation to, uh, how many Senate seats they have, and the yellow ones, they show states that have more cows than people. And you see the ones that are more represented, they, they often have more cows than people. And I keep going with the argument and making that same, just using different forms of chart to make the same point. Here's another example that I wanna show quickly of how you can use the numbers, use numbers in a way without actually showing numbers very much like you can make a lot of data visualization shows charts but you can also just have a little simple calculator that in this case here's how much time you'd spend uh, uh commuting if you went back to commuting as you had before so you, what you're supposed to do is just you come here and you input your the how much how much time you used to spend on commuting before the pandemic and that changes the output and changes how the story is told it changes for example if you show uh, less than 30 minutes, you have a uh, different, uh, the, the text that I I'm highlighting here, it changes according to what you input. So 
the way that this is done is also like Alicia was showing, like you have a little data set. In this case, it's very simple math. It's not really complicated math, but uh, the responses that we can see, this is the Spanish version that I opened here because we had a Spanish version as well. But like all that we have here is like a round trip commute. So this column here powers uh, this. And, and here, what you have the word, these are the words that, that change, the, the highlighted words that you see changing here. So in a way to make it sound more human, well, all that I did is like to rewrite, to write this thinking of each one of those. So in, it, this is how you can make a data set, uh, if, even if you don't have one, as long as you do a little bit of math. And in this case here, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a scientist like Alicia. I, I do very rudimentary math. So uh, I, I, I can't do much more than that. But, and finally, I wanna close with one example of uh, a similar to this, but in a different, this is a, this comes, uh, from uh, a research that some uh, scholars had done on how people respond to, um, to conspiracy theories. They made a research with, a, with, a, with I think 2,500 Americans or something like that. It was a representative sample of the US. And they realized that one uh, person, uh, that nine, person in, nine people in 10 would believe in at, at least one conspiracy theory of a certain number of 10 questions that they had. So in here, all that we have is a very simple percentage of you know, how many people believed uh, on that certain uh, theory. Or for example, half of the Americans believe that, uh, I, uh, half of the people interviewed believe that Epstein killed himself. And 44% believe that JFK were killed by conspiracy. So this is actually a simple one, a simple data set that, allowed us to do a quiz. So, but uh, what is interesting here is like, we can make, uh, based on that research, so we found a researcher who uh, had done serious work. We vetted that researcher. We got, in, case, in this case here, we had two different researchers in two, two different cases, but we, turned, we end up using the simplest one, the simplest data set in this case, and we were able to build a quiz. But the most challenging thing here is not just, I mean, there's some technical challenge. like, of course, you're making a quiz and you give answers and they are right or wrong. And you're counting whether, uh, you know, and after, after each answer or each question uh, on the quiz, like uh, they are all testing whether or not you believe in, believe in a certain conspiracy theory. You have an answer here. And you have uh, a percentage, uh, a simple chart that shows how many people uh, in that research believed in, uh, in that theory. Then you have a little bit of an, an explanation of how these theories are done, are done. But what I think is kind of interesting in this, in this story here is that, uh, and challenging too, is that you have a sub, in, in reality, I did expect that the readers of the Washington Post who, you know, who came to this link, most of them would not believe in any of those theories or, or very few of those theories. There are, if you look at the comments later, you see that some people do believe in some of those. Like, uh, and actually the comment section is, is hilarious in this one because people say, well, I got everything right, but I know that JFK uh, was killed by a conspiracy theory. You can't come up with that. And, uh, and so it's, it, is, uh, it is kind of interesting. Uh, but so Thanks. you have, yeah, just closing, uh, you have to write uh, the, what I what I'm meant to say is that you write uh, in a way that respect the intelligence of the reader and you connect one answer to the next and you use the numbers that way. That's all I had to say. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's great, Sergio. And um, I really appreciate seeing all your creativity um, here. It's uh, it's great.